Now, most fans of the show are aware of the chance circumstances which led to the character Bob. Well, the truth is, this can happen at any time or any place to anyone. It's not that David Lynch is any more creative than anyone else. It's only that he is more switched on and tuned into the creative nature of this shared reality that we all inhabit. And so Dale's dream sequence early on in the show is a direct reflection of the infinite gulf of possibilities that is inherent to this dream-like existence that we inhabit. At least at a certain level and from a certain perspective, life can be seen in such a way. And Oscar Wilde once said that, quote, life imitates art far more than art imitates life, end quote. Well, I guess Mr. Wilde never met the likes of Mr. David Lynch. So I'm going to give Lynch's world building the room to breathe and exist in its own right, with all of its possibilities and mysteries ceaselessly unfolding, which seems to be the natural trajectory for Twin Peaks in the first place. There are still plenty of themes and symbolism to explore and to speculate upon. After all, there is no harm in attempting to define the undefinable, and there's nothing where we wouldn't stop doing it anyway as human beings. <laughs> so it's the sort of thing we enjoy inherently as humans, as we are, um, you know, our, our identities and entire lives are driven by stories that we tell ourselves and tell each other. And we're always seeking to, um, you know, we're, we're, we recognize patterns and are always seeking to, to decipher meaning from those patterns because our very survival can depend on it. So it's a, um, you know, there's something very beautiful and compelling about that to wonder about the ultimate nature of reality and to ask ourselves who we really are, to dive deep into our collective psyche and see what we can bring back to share for the rest of the world. It's a tradition that's nearly as old as culture itself, and what I'm describing, of course, is the hero's journey crossing into the mysteries of the unconscious and the transcendent realms of the other world for a short time, exploring a seemingly bizarre place which is oddly familiar, and then coming back and sharing what we've learned, having uh, been transformed by the experience. Okay, so now that I've hammered this home, Let's dig into Dale's dream and the waiting room and see what we find. So there's probably many more things some of you will see that I that I won't. So feel free to share your observations in the comments. Now on one level, I interpret Mike as the a sort of ferryman or messenger of the story who is communicating this to Agent Cooper, or he's he may even be relaying his own story, and Cooper is is witnessing um, Mike telling his story. So the darkness of future past refers to the mysterious nature of reality and its relationship to time. Time is treated as an eternal now in this context, using the term future past. Remember, Dale has entered the realm of the unconscious, a place where understanding goes deeper than our superficial interpretation of time. I studied this scene very closely and can say confidently that Mike uses the word chance, C-H-A-N-T-S, as, as in referring to a mantra. And he doesn't use the word chance, C-H-A-N-C-E, as in luck. So if you go back and listen to exactly what he's saying, Mike is saying one chance out between two worlds, fire walk with me. So the, so the mantra is actually between two worlds, fire walk with me. That is the mantra. 
Now, the magician here, refer uh, it could refer to the boy in the movie prequel, Fire Walk With Me, as he is referred to in the film credits, which, of course, is David Lynch's own son. Initially, I thought the grandson of Mrs. Tremond or Mrs. Chalfont, as she is known in the movie, factored more into Philip Gerard's soliloquy, but now I really don't think so anymore. Who I interpret the magician to be, uh, to me at least, is Mike himself. And that Mike is responsible for summoning many spirits into the manifest realm of Twin Peaks, including Bob. And we'll talk about more. Uh, we'll talk about more about Bob later. Even more precisely, the magician, if we presume he is Mike, could be thought of um, as the source of Mike's existence, which is the pure conscious awareness. So all roads are pointing to that. Now, similar to the sort of thing which leads us to the Bhagavad Gita, and then that eventually leads us to the Upanishads. Um, so we have to remember that David Lynch is very much an American mystic, having a deep intuitive understanding of Eastern religious philosophy. So if we view it through that lens, things start to come into focus a little bit better and make a lot more sense. So such an understanding cannot help but be seen for what it is in Twin Peaks. It's the sort of thing that once you see it through this lens, it starts to make a lot of sense, at least to me. Now, chance between two worlds refers to a mantra, as I said earlier. A mantra is a sacred sound or beacon that is devoid of meaning. Despite having no meaning, it is quite indeed a real and powerful thing. However, the purpose or function of a mantra is quite significant as it has the power to unite the perceived separate worlds of the outside and inside or the worlds of spirit and matter into a state of non-dual pure awareness. Mantras are used to transport the chanter or the magician from the world of surface mind chatter into progressively deeper and more transcendent levels of consciousness, which is a union of the dream world and waking states emanating from the very same source. This non-dual worldview or deeply transcendent understanding of the nature of reality is what lends such a dreamlike and surreal quality to so many of David Lynch's works. It's his vision alone which is responsible for that uniquely uh, Lynchian quality to his films, a quality which is only possible when one has had firsthand experience in the realm of the transcendent, such as Mr. Lynch tunes himself into every single day, twice a day. It's the sort of thing he has talked about at great length in terms of his foundation and the benefits of a twice daily TM practice. And it is something that I wanted to experience for myself in hopes of really going as deeply as I could with my understanding of Twin Peaks. And I really couldn't have predicted just how much my life has been transformed from such a simple practice after being formally trained in Transcendental Meditation myself. I am eternally grateful for starting this project in the first place, and I'm happy that you're watching this video. Because it means, to me, there is a chance you might, a small chance maybe, you might look into learning TM for yourself. I don't endorse anything, um, and, and I don't say that you need to try this or, or anything like that. I can only say that the results speak for themselves in my own life, and uh, I really can't believe I didn't start it sooner. Now, one very important thing to point out about chants and mantras is that they were intended, are intended to be meaningless. 
I'll read the following quote from Sadhguru who explains the significance of a mantra. And Sadhguru says, quote, Mantras are not supposed to have any meanings. Unfortunately, the mantras that are normally known, they have given them meanings so that people can involve because there's lots of idiotic people who cannot involve with anything that is meaningless. That is why they miss the sunrise, the sunset, the moon. Everything they miss because it's meaningless. What is the meaning of a full moon? There is no meaning. Only if you are in love, it means a lot. Otherwise, what is it? Nothing. It is not meaningful means it is not useful. So all the idiots on the planet will do only meaningful things. Meanings are made up in human minds. Sound is the essence of creation. If you touch the sound, you are touching creation. If you touch a word, you are just going into psychological structure of human beings, end quote. 